Um, this morning we started out in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And then we got into, um, um, let the words of my mouth, Psalm 19, 14, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that's where we got hung up. We got hung up on meditation. Never got out of there. Never got past that. Got kind of just stuck right there. And uh, which was good. It was good. It was, you know, so this morning, if you weren't here, uh, go listen to it on the internet. You'll get blessed. Hallelujah. We're going to move on, though, because we're, we're, our, our purpose is confession, talking about our, the words of our mouth. And so we're going to move back over off the meditation. I remember the, the meditation side is important because it determines what's going to come out of your mouth. What you feed on is going to determine what comes out. Amen. You know, what, what, what you put in which is what's, what you're going to get out. So we want to make sure that we, um, that we put the right stuff in. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead to Isaiah 59, 21, where uh, the, the prophet says this. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words that I put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. And so God's saying here that we're to put the word of God into our mouth. We're to put it into our children's mouth. We're to put it into our children's children's mouth. Why? Because God wants us all to walk in that same place. And the key to it is having the word in us. Amen. So it is part of our posterity to pass on that we teach our children and our children's children and so forth that they're to put the word of God in their mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because if you don't put it in, you can't get it out. Now, if you're only speaking positive things, well, you know, uh, it's going to be a good day. You know, you're, you're relying on human efforts instead of trusting in the anointing of God. It is the Word of God. It is the anointing factor that, that is the difference between uh, simply the power of positive thinking and the power of believing what God said and speaking what God said. Because, see, God's Word is anointed, and it's anointed to destroy yokes and remove burdens. You know, uh, if you forget to make your positive confession one day, you can have a horrible day if it's just the power of positive thinking. But see, when you, when you live by faith and what's in you comes out, then you're filling yourself with the Word of God, and the Word of God has the power to transform or to change. Now, um, 2 Corinthians 4, not in the notes, so we're gonna, I'm going to just have to go look real quick. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Well, we better back up. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but, through our outward, that, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How do you renew the inward man? You renew the inward man by feeding on the Word of God. He doesn't get renewed with a T-bone. Your flesh does. Hallelujah. Baked potato. I mean, yeast rolls with butter and honey. You ever do that? Take it and just poke a hole right down the middle of a yeast roll and put butter in there and pour honey in it and then kind of squeeze it together to eat it? Glory to God. Uh, Logan's has, a, has good yeast rolls. And so we'll ask for honey sometime. Those that bring out a little ramkin of honey and you just take it and you stick, just stick your finger in it. Take the butter and shove the butter in there and then pour honey in it and just kind of mash it together. And then, mm. Is anybody hungry yet? I see people right now calling, looking at their credit card companies on their uh, iPads. Says they got, if I got enough room to run over to Logan's after church. Hallelujah. Praise God. They'll bring you a whole basket out too. Glory to God. That's why I can't go there often. No, you don't renew the inward man by, by food. You renew it, well, not by natural food. You renew it by supernatural food you renew it by the word of god amen hallelujah for our light affliction which is but for a moment aren't you glad that whatever you're going through god sees it as a light affliction he not he, you know, he didn't get he did not get up this morning and say oh my god karen is in a crisis and fall off the throne <laughs> okay aren't you glad he looked down and said oh that's just a light affliction it's, it's nothing too big for me. It's, it, it, I mean, I don't even have to, I don't even have to flicker. It's just, it's just a light affliction. 
Though our light affliction, which is but for, our, listen, a moment. You think, Pastor, I've been going through it for five years. God says it's a moment. Now, now, wait, now wait a second. Now, understand this. Hold your place here. I, I'm, I'm going to digress just a little bit. Well, not digress. I'm going, to, I'm going to go parallel to another, another thought. And run with me to the 126th Psalm. Now, remember, it says here that though our light affliction is but for a moment. Everybody say, but a moment. Look, look at Psalm 126, verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Now, wait a second now. It doesn't matter how long you've been going through it. It doesn't matter how tough it's been. It doesn't matter what it seemed like, how, how, how close you came to going under and not coming back up. He says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. <coughs> the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Glory. I'm telling you, at the moment that it gets turned, it just, it, all of a sudden, and the laughter comes and the joy comes because it's been turned, all of a sudden, all that's just, just for a moment. When you get on the other side of it, all of a sudden, it just, it's just like, but when you're in the middle of it, it seems like it's an eternity. That's why we have the Word of God. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, the Word of God's given you courage that whatever it is, whatever the battle is, whatever you've been going through. Now, like one preacher said, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Some Christians get out and bring out a picnic lunch and camp for a couple of weeks. Hello? No, just keep going. You don't stop. I said you don't stop. You keep going. Hallelujah. Because if, if, if that's where you are, you don't want to stop. Amen? Hallelujah. So when the Lord turned again the captive of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Listen, where have it said among the heathen? The Lord's done great things for them. Whereof he has done great things for us. Amen? Whereof we're glad. Oh, remember that old song we used to sing in church? Well, I mean, we are church, but I mean, when growing up in church. Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Jesus has come. And my, my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm, I couldn't remember that. I couldn't remember that part. I had sung that in a long time. Amen. Jesus has come and my cup is overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Amen. We don't have enough gladness in the church. See, that's why he gives us the scripture so we can say, but our light afflictions, but for a moment. Whatever we're going through, it's light and it's for a moment. Amen. amen. Can you say amen to that? <clears throat> Here's how we are able to stand withstand all that. While we look not at the things which are seen. What? That, that light affliction that's but for a moment. But at the things which are unseen or not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. You've got a promise from God. Yeah. See, the devil wants to tell you this eternal. This is how it's going to be forever. This is how it's going to be from now on. You're just never going to get out of this. This is just the way it's going to be. But God said it's temporal. Whatever you're looking at, it's just temporal. What's that mean? Subject to change. Glory to God. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's temporary. It's temporal. It's not set in stone. It's not your destiny. Luke, it is your destiny. My destiny is not failure. Your destiny is not failure. 
Your destiny is not to, 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 to succumb. Your destiny is not to, to fail. I mean, is, is, your destiny is not failure. Your destiny is not defeat. Your destiny is not ever making it out. Your destiny is not to live that way for the rest of your life. Your destiny is to be a child of God and a son of God and to rise up and to come, overcome it and be on the other side. And that when the Lord turns your captivity, you'll be like them that dream. Then your mouth is filled with laughter and your tongue with singing glory to God. Hallelujah. God has done great things for you because when you look at your life, affliction it's but for a moment and we're not to look at it we're to look at what you know because it's only temporal it's subject to change glory to God and he goes on and says this hallelujah while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal what's eternal forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven now forever is an eternal statement His word is settled in heaven. Don't you look at that moment, that light affliction. That momentary light affliction. Don't keep focusing on that. He, say, he says, while we look not at those things. And they're the easy things to look at. Come on now. It's easy to look at the stack of bills. It's easy to look at not enough money. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, that's a temporary situation. I said it's a temporary situation. Hallelujah. Want to hear it again? I said it's a temporary situation. That's what it is. It's a temporary situation. We got to get our eyes off of it. We got to get our eyes on that which is eternal. His word is eternal. And when we look at those situations, listen, I'm not saying this is an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. When you're looking at Friday, and Friday says you've got to have X number of dollars, and you're looking at everything in between, and the X number of dollars ain't coming. In the natural, you don't get paid for the next, till the next Friday. Come on. I, listen, well, Dad Hagen had great faith. Have you ever, did you, did you ever hear the stories? They have so many bills they couldn't pay. They would just put them in a hat and draw them out and pay those. And when they drew out of the hat, uh, all the money they had, that's, uh, that's who they paid. And everybody else, they just tell you, we have to get to you when we can. See, everybody thinks he started out where he, he, he ended up. Nobody starts out where they ended up. Amen. He had to learn to live by faith, too. And had to learn... I had to learn how to not look at the things which are seen and trust God in the midst of it. Amen. Okay. All right. If you're breathing, raise your hand. All right, everybody's breathing. Just every once in a while, exhale, and when you exhale, say amen. <laughs> at the same time. If you don't, I'm going to go send somebody to my office to get my bobblehead and have him... Help me preach. While we look not, see, remember that. Let's back up here. I better, let's back up to chapter, to verse one. This is, well, we're talking about confession. See, if you can do this, you can confess right. Let's verse one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we, as we receive mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For if our gospel be hid, it is hid in those who are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and your, ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen to verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. One translation says knocked down, but not knocked out. Hallelujah. Some about to shout. Amen. Yeah, I got knocked down, but you ain't knocked me out. 
Hallelujah. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, and the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us, us, present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. There, see? What? We have the spirit of faith. Which cause we faint not. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, for which cause we faint not. Amen? Hallelujah. Though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. See, we're, we're people of faith. Amen? For our light of affliction is but for a moment. Hallelujah. And it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And while we, See, when you, when you walk out the things of God, you're walking in the Spirit. You're getting... You're getting Paul got to one place where he was told, about, talking about the thorn in the flesh. He said, I'll rejoice in my infirmity. Not that he's going to put up with it that the power of Christ might rest upon me. And it wasn't putting up power, it was yoke destroying, burden removing power. Right, right. See, we get things mixed up. We think when he said that the power of Christ might rest upon me, it was simply in order for him to just to kind of put up with where he was. It was, it, was the, it was the power that would lift him above the fray. It was the power that would cause victory to take place. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, when you triumph, you're not, you don't, you're not drug in, barely getting along. I mean, you know, uh, in by what we used to call the skin of your teeth. A triumphal procession is victory. And it's not victorious to come in, ha not just half defeated, I mean, on life support. Spiritual life support, you're barely making it in. Nope, God's called you for victory. God's called you to win. God's called you to be a head, not the tail. Above only and not beneath. You're more than a conqueror through him that loved you. More than a conqueror. Everybody say more than a conqueror. Amen. Now, if he just said you're barely a conqueror, well, you're halfway to being a conqueror. You're conquerish. Yeah, you're in the neighborhood. No. He said we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Glory to God. I say glory to God. <clears throat> Thank God it's not just barely get along. It's not just you know, make it in somehow, some way, by some hook or crook. It is we are the triumphant church. We're the victorious church. We're the blood-bought church. Glory to God. We walk in B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. We're the conquering church. Hallelujah. More than conquerors. Glory to God. I say glory to God. See, you may have woke up this morning and felt like you were the, the tail and not the head. But, uh, below only and not above. You couldn't go under, over, or around. Because you're buried under the, the pressure of all of it. But that's just a lie of the devil. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We are the blessed of the Lord. We are the triumphant of the Lord. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <coughs> and whatever you're going through is a light affliction, but for a moment. Amen. It's been 10 years, Pastor. When you measure it against all of eternity, it is but for a moment. And I'm telling listen, do not be fatalistic. Do not capitulate to the mindset that this is the way it has to be. Do not start singing, K, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. I've already got the future. Hallelujah. Are you here? Amen. Glory to God. What does it say? I win. You win. We're winners. We're the triumphant church. And I want you to know that if Israel came out, Hallelujah, and with no feeble one among them, the church comes out and the power of the Spirit victorious over all the works of the enemy. 
for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The French Bible, translated from French back into English, says, this, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might reduce to zero the works of the devil. Nil. Net. Nine. Nothing! There is one on the inside of us tonight <coughs> who stands as the representative of the second person of the Godhead, he being the third person of the Godhead, represent the victorious life of the greater one. Amen? Of the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave. Praise God. And he's referred to by John as the greater one, the one who's on the inside of us is greater than the one that's in the world. Oh, hallelujah. And so your confession needs to rise up. You need to look at every one of those light afflictions. You need to look at those things that are just but for a moment. And you need to say, you have no hold on me. You have no authority over me. You have no power over me, glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm washed in the blood, glory to God. The greater one's on the inside of me. Glory be to God forever. The, I am anointed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that anointing working in me and through me destroys yokes and removes burdens, glory to God, and finances and sickness and disease and all the things of the the enemy have no hold on me Amen. glory have no power over me <laughs> hallelujah i just i just keep I'm, I'm a, hallelujah father i just pray for kelvin we speak life over his body right now in the name of jesus Thank you that he's healed from the top of his head to his soles of his feet and renewed by the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. And she told me you had, 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 a, had a migraine. Or you got it right in a second? Ah, well, glory to God. And we curse that in the name of Jesus. The anointing breaks the yoke of that. Oh, all the blood vessels relax. All the blood flow is normal. Hallelujah, all the constriction, the old crush kick, come on, ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. How's that head? You're doing good. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, praise God. See, if we, 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 we just cannot succumb to the pressure to speak the problem instead of speaking the answer. Can you say amen? Makes me, uh, uh, you know, you may want to. Are y'all here? You going home? Your your flesh may want to scream out the problem, but your spirit wants to scream out the answer. Hallelujah! Yeah, but I tried that once. You can't try it once. You got to live that way. This isn't a try. God did not say the just shall try to live by faith. He didn't say the just shall give faith a, try, a shot. He didn't say the just shall say, I did that once, didn't work. He said, shall live by faith. You're going to live by faith. Live. Well, how many know right now you live by breathing? What do you do? You breathe all the time. You don't breathe, you don't live. Real simple. I know if you don't eat, but you don't, if, you, if, if you don't eat, you can go a week or two. If you don't breathe, you go a minute or two. Hello? You got to breathe to live. You hear you're going home. You got to live by faith. So you say, it's, it's an always thing. Everybody say, it's an always thing. Unbelief is as toxic to your spirit life as carbon monoxide is to your physical life. So unbelief is the carbon monoxide of the spirit. It'll suffocate you. It'll rob you of your faith. It'll rob you of your ability to do the things you need to do. Don't say amen, say oh me. Hallelujah. So, we're going to stop. Why are we going to stop? Because I, I, I'm done, the Holy Ghost is done, and I don't need to go try to pick up and add on to something that he just got through encouraging you with. Somebody just got encouraged tonight. Hallelujah. Say, we're, we're going, you only preach about 30 minutes. And? Does it have to be an hour? 
Hello? I said, does it have to be an hour? You going to get more blessed if I preach longer? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but not if it's, the whole, if it's not the Holy Ghost, you're not. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I can't go back and hook up to where I was going. I just preached out what, I was, what, what was in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen.